Hey folks, everything new under the sun. Well, uh, welcome back to, uh, I guess, my uh, my prophecy update. Uh, glad to be here again, and uh, we are safe and sound after Hurricane Fiona kind of ran over us and then uh, was quickly eclipsed by um, Hurricane Ian in Florida, which came in as a Category 4 there. Um, Fiona, however, in Canada was the biggest storm ever to hit uh, any part of Canada. It was the biggest storm in terms of size and uh, I believe wind speed even and uh, the pressure. So significant and it affected us. If, if a Category 4 hurricane were to ever hit any part of Canada, all the buildings would be flattened. Our, our buildings just aren't, uh, were never built that way. And in Florida, of course, they, they rebuild all the time. So they had different codes for to deal with hurricanes uh, more regularly. But we would be wiped out. And a lot of people are wiped out. A lot of fishermen, um, 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 uh, bays are wiped out, uh, ports are, are wiped out, uh, docks, uh, uh, boats uh, up on the road, uh, f uh, fishermen's buildings up and, and uh, moved, uh, roadways washed away, uh, s sand dunes uh, disappeared, all sorts of things. Um, in many ways, the landscape has significantly changed. There's also cornfields that are completely wiped out, blown over, um, possibly unusable harvest other than maybe animal feed. So there's a lot of things going on. And uh, one interesting thing about it is with all the trees that fell over, which was more than Hurricane Dorian, I believe God is uh, setting up and providing for us for what's coming in the future. When the cold winter comes, when fuel and energy is at its lowest and we're looking for wood to burn, we will look back at Hurricane Fiona and say, you know what? The Lord laid over those trees so that they could dry out to be ready for us in time to burn as firewood so that we won't freeze at night. Incredible thing that occurred. No one likes uh, uh, these things to occur. But I think the Lord is uh, uh, setting us up and getting us ready, providing for us in advance. And most people don't even recognize it, uh, that he is kind of laying these trees over so that they can dry out, uh, you know, standing dead if you will, perfect for uh, uh, wood burning in a, in the next year or so, um, being that they're uh, laid over, and, and I certainly can't get to all of them. So something to think about. Now, on my timeline of the return of the Lord, we'll get to the current news, news here. I have Ezekiel 38 and 39, War of Gog Magog. And what does it speak of there? And, th and this is part of what we're going to be talking about. This is Ezekiel 38. Uh, let's see. Is this talking about a country from the north? Uh, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth all thine uh, army, horses, horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armies, even a great company with bucklers and shields, it says. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with them all with shield and helmet. <clears throat> and it goes on. And after many days thou shalt be visited. And in the latter year, so in the last days, in the last times, we are in those last days. And thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the swords. That's talking about the land of Israel. And is gathered out of many people. Again, Israel, the Jews, gathered out of um, the nations of the world. Against the mountains of Israel, which has been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations. So this is per, uh, exactly talking about what has occurred. Uh, Israel as a nation after 1948 brought out of the world, out of the ocean, if you will, uh, of mankind and brought together uh, to be a distinct Jewish community and uh, nation of Israel. Thou shalt uh, uh, ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud. Uh, it goes up. Um, I will go unto thee to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are rest that dwell safely to take a spoil. And this is the key part here. Verse 12. Let me scroll up so you can see it. Take a spoil and take a prey and to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. And I will... Uh, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten uh, cattle, goods, and dwell in the midst of the land. And so to take a spoil, uh, and many people have said, you take the SP off spoil and you get oil. Are they coming from nat for natural gas and oil? Well, before this, you would say, you know, it can't be Russia because Russia has lots of reserves in gas and oil. And they do. But you know what? Now they can't deliver that gas and oil because of the uh, Nord Stream pipeline explosion. I think this sets up 
uh, what I believe is uh, coming shortly, Ezekiel 38 and 39. My timeline is not exactly correct, but I think we're moving there in that direction very, very quickly. Let's take a look at a couple of things. Um, Cuba's electrical grid collapses after Hurricane Ian, and that's what happened where we are as well. Um, uh, where, where I am, two-thirds of the population is without power at this point. Uh, we have, uh, most of us have no power now. Uh, they're, they're turning up critical grids, critical services, uh, lines that are going to things like gas stations, hospitals. But if you're not on a line that goes to a gas station or hospital, you are without power. We have uh, friends just down the road who have no power uh, at all. Uh, and it, we're going into day six, uh, day seven tomorrow without power. And I had to rely on my solar power. And generally it worked good. Maybe, maybe we'll review that later. But Let's continue. This is something you need to prepare for. You need to have gas drainer or generator or something. And in the first two days after that hurricane, there were kilometer long lineups. And you saw the videos on my channel that I posted of the lineups of gas. And again, this is something that we in the Maritimes in Canada are not used to dealing with. Um, many people were prepared, uh, um, uh, you know, for with gas, but there were big long lineups. United Nations uh, food chief warns of chaos, even hell, and widespread food shortages. When? Next year. Also look at energy shortages, uh, natural gas, uh, propane, uh, uh, diesel, etc. There will be shortages of everything. And this is why the Lord allowed the trees to fall in record number in the Maritimes, I believe, uh, because it gets us ready to have some fuel for when we need it. Uh, I think... You know, I think we'll look ba look back at that and say, you know what, the Lord set that up from the beginning, and I'd like to think, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's a good way to look at it. So, a perfect storm on top of a perfect storm. We have World War III. Uh, we're in the middle of right now. We have uh, supply chain issues, economic collapse going on, and then we have these massive hurricanes happening. And why is there a red line being crossed in the world? Well, as, as in the days of Lot, Minister Montero from Italy, I, I think it's Italy. Uh, reveals the hidden parts of gender ideology, the, the hypersexualization of minors, and the promotion of sexual acts between minors and adults, corrupting their inno innocence. Uh, it says the new law um, Montero promoted states uh, in Article 181 of the Penal Code, whomever performs acts of sexual nature with a minor under 16 years of age will be punished with a prison sentence, a sentence of uh, two to six years. Um, it seems that the minister had not read the, the law where she promoted and defended uh, in Congress um, sexual relations between children and adults are a crime punishable by pr uh, prison, it says. Um, but this particular uh, minister um, basically said on September 21st that uh, the, based on the hearings in Congress that yeah, it was Spain, it was Spain, not Italy, um, but called uh, pedophilia a right. So after uh, these laws, uh, which declare you know what the actual law is, um, they are now coming out and saying, you know what, this is a right. The people should be allowed to. What do they say? Children should have the right to have sexual relations with whomever they want as long as they consent. So again, as in the days uh, of Lot. Um, and uh, what was happening then? Well, homosexuality was one of the key markers, one of the um, a keystone uh, things that was happening at that time that was really God's red line. All right, the uh, uh, Nord Stream. One of the last remaining gas pipelines into Europe may be shut down in legal dispute, unleashing end-of-days energy crisis without precedent. This is naturalnews.com. Um, again, Nord Stream pipeline sabotage clearly orchestrated by ruthless Biden regime. Apparently Biden came out uh, prior to all this happening, prior to the, the war in Ukraine, and said, you know what, if you go to war in Ukraine, we're going to shut down Nord Stream pipeline. And uh, what happens, it is September uh, 29th, uh, 2022, and come to find out that someone stopped the Nord Stream pipeline. Um, no one's saying who it was. And it doesn't make a lot of sense that it's Russia. You can go back and forth and listen to people who, who say different things about whether that makes sense or not. Um, but it's interesting. The demolition of the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines in the Baltic Sea is one of the most outrageous evil acts of terrorism and sabotage in history. Now that sabotage has been confirmed by numerous nations, the blame game has begun. Everyone is wondering, who did it? Uh, let's see. Uh... Joe Biden, uh, let's see, 
uh, and GOP Senator Ron Johnson are all on record demanding Nord Stream pipelines be taken out, implying that they will use any means necessary. So they, there's an actual video of, of them suggesting, you know what, we're going to take it out. Senator Johnson says, I can't think of a more powerful way to punish Russian aggression than by rolling back what progress has been made and, if at all possible, prevent Nord Stream 2 from ever being completed. Senator Johnson, taking action will prevent it from ever becoming operational. Newland says, our expectation is that the pipeline will be suspended. Lots of um, information and in, in, uh, uh, statements, really, uh, by these people coming out and saying, you know what, Nord Stream is going to be hit, but, you know, somehow, some way, they're going to stop it. Well, uh, Joe Biden says, if Russia invades, then there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We will bring an end to it. This is what he said. That was February 7th that he said that in a thinly veiled threat to annihilate Nord Stream Pipeline. Again, come September now, here where we are. And what happened? Well, Nord Stream uh, is no longer. Reporter, but how will you do that exactly since the project is in Germany's control? Biden, I promise you, we will be able to do that, he said. All right. Germany believes high explosive devices equivalent of 500 kilograms of TNT used to destroy Nord Stream. Highly explosive devices. So it was sabotage. It was... Uh, terrorism, whatever you want, state-sponsored, whatever. It's, it's significant. It would be hard to do and to uh, procure this kind of stuff. And Germany wouldn't do it because that's the only way they're getting any gas, even if it's uh, turned off or, or slowed by Russia. And Russia's not going to do it because that's the, the bargaining chip that they're using. That's the blackmail that they're using. If they turn it on, they turn it off. So it's not in Russia's interest to uh, blow up their own unless they're looking for an excuse for all-out war, which doesn't make any sense. Russia doesn't want all-out war. They just want to make money and gain some territory. The only uh, country that it makes sense for at this point really is the United States, who seems to be pushing uh, for war and seems to be putting all the pressure on Russia really to, um, you know, they're, they're pushing the bear into the corner and they're looking for the bear to act out. I don't know why. Why are they looking so badly and wanting so badly for World War III? It's crazy to think of. But again, what's the result of this? Well, you come back to Ezekiel 38 and 39, um, where the North countries and the alliance comes down to take a spoil, to take a prey. Well, they can't deliver oil maybe to Europe. And Israel now has deals through Egypt to provide natural gas and oil and such to Europe. So Israel is basically undercutting everything Russia is doing. Russia can't even export its uh, natural gas anymore because the pipelines are blown up. That means uh, Israel is the sole provider in large part or will be shortly. That means Israel is now the biggest target of Russia because they are undercutting and Europe will go will happily go with Israel um, because they know Israel is not going to go to war against them or try and cut them off. And uh, so this really brings Ezekiel 38 and 39 um, to reality. And uh, and again, when you look at, you know, no one could see this coming. No one thought it you know could happen anytime soon. The situation is now escalating significantly and fascinatingly um, to the point where indeed we could have this march on Israel because of oil and gas and, and, and Russia coming to take the spoil, to take the oil from Israel so that they can't resell it to Europe. Uh, pretty fascinating stuff as we look at the timeline of the return of the Lord. Be prepared for it, folks. Things don't get easier. They don't get easier for me. They don't get easier for you. 2020, as I've said from the beginning, will get worse and worse and worse, and it is uh, for, for most people everywhere. And um, it's an incredible time to be alive. We're watching Bible prophecy unfold before our eyes. And uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, I think we get to the edge of World War III, uh, the edge of conventional kind of open warfare, World War III. And then uh, some Antichrist leader rises to the occasion and says, I'm going to bring peace. You just need to agree to this and that. And the CBDC, the, the Central Bank Digital Currencies, are ready to go. Um, everybody's on board using digital. We all use debit and credit cards now and um, you know, Bitcoin and these other things. All they need to do is for political uh, interest to um, flip the switch, force us all over and say, you know what, we're going to this because X, Y, and Z. And I think that they're going to do that sooner than later. I think that's going to happen when the, the Antichrist, um, the world leader, the, the, the 
amazing politician that pops his head up and says, you know what, I can solve all these world issues. We're at the precipice of war. We're at the, at the edge of World War III and economic collapse and famine. I can fix all these things. You just need to accept this and, and, uh, and, and vote me in as the leader of the world. And it uh, goes downhill quickly from there. And, and so begins the seven-year period. So we're very close. Timeline is not 100% correct. Nobody knows exactly what the timeline is. We can make all the guesses we want. We can read the scriptures and try and come to an understanding. But I think we all agree that things have been escalating since the start of COVID and before that. Things are not getting better. We are not going back to normal. We are not going back to normal, folks. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? This is the only way to have peace in your life. Be prepared, folks. Continue preparing because I think the worst is yet to come uh, in terms of what people experience on this earth. But the best is yet to come for those believers in Christ Jesus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.